Hey guys, welcome to our channel Techno Savior. So in today's video, I am going to explain you about solid principles using a different approach. So here I will show you examples when and where you can implement the solid principles. Well, if you are watching this video, then you are much aware about why design principles are required and how these principles helps us in creating a more maintainable and organized code. So similarly, solid principles focuses on five design principles that intends to make the software changes more flexible and maintainable. I have created a sample project so that you guys can practice the solid principles over here. And uh, this project is already uploaded in the GitHub and you can find the link here. And also I'll be mentioning this link in the description box below. Okay, so let's get started. So solid principle talks about five design principle. So first is the single responsibility principle. So the single responsibility principle tells that a class should have only a single responsibility. So here I have an example of a class called user service. So as you can see this user service has the register method. So if a new user is coming they can register here and also it is using the login method. Apart from that it is using some kind of a method called validate email and also send email. This clearly shows that validate email and send email doesn't belong to this user service class so this violates the single responsibility principle in the solid so what we need to do basically these two methods needs to be moved to a different class so we'll create a email service class and we'll be adding those two methods here now what happens this email service class is only responsible for all the email related things okay so now i've created an instance of the email service and instead of directly calling the methods, it will be calling via the email service classes. So now we have achieved our single responsibility principle. So after S, the open closed principle comes into picture. What it tells is the software entities should be open for extension but closed for modification. So let's look at our example. So we have a area calculator class that calculates the total area. So it looks perfectly fine and also it works perfectly fine. But think about a scenario. Now a new requirement came because of which you need to calculate the area of a triangle. Now we have to modify the base class since we are modifying the base class. So thereby we are violating the open closed principle. So how can we achieve open closed principle in this case? If we look at the class circle and class rectangle, they are containing only the properties. So what we can do is we can create an interface that calculates the area. So I've created a interface called I area. So here I will create a method that will return the area. So that will be public. I will have double as a type and area. Now this area needs to be implemented by different classes. Now we need to implement the I area method in the circle and also in the rectangle. I area. Okay. So let's quickly implement the interfaces. So the area logic is added height into width. So now let's implement the area method for uh, calculating the area of circle. So the area methods look something like this pi r square. Now we need to change the area calculator so that it follows the open closed principle. So instead of checking individually for whether it's a circle or rectangle, I will just ignore all the things and what I will do, I will call the object dot area. So this will return me the area and what I need to do is keep adding it as our previous logic. So this is the only change. Going forward if any new shape is added, I need to add a new class here, example triangle.cs and I can send the triangle.cs into the array of the objects and the total area will be calculated. So this is how we can achieve open closed principle. So after open closed principle next is the list of substitution principle. List of substitution principle tells that object in a program should be replaceable with their instances of their subtypes without altering the correctness of the program. So what it tries to tell is you should be able to use any derived class instead of a parent class and have it behave in the same manner without modification. So let's look at an example where it is getting violated only then we will be able to achieve it. So here I have a file. So it has two methods called get text from file and save all text into file and it has a property which has a list of files so let's look at the list of file so the list of file contains load text and save text so this is some kind of a dummy code that i have written just to highlight the importance of the file so we have two other files like read only file it has 
load text file only. If you try to save it, it will throw IO exception telling that cannot save. And there is one more file called read write file, which has all the methods properly implemented. Now if we come back to the SQL file manager for get text from files, we don't have any conditions. So we are able to easily load text from each of the files that are part of list file. But if we see the method save text into files, we have written some kind of a if condition that if it is a read only file, then ignore it or else you continue for the other list of files. So because we have such kind of logic where we don't have any actual implementation and we throw some kind of a error. In that kind of cases, LISCUP substitution principle gets violated because the child class was not able to replace the base class properly. So how can we handle these kind of scenarios? We need to create interface that will have load text and save text. So let's quickly create these two interfaces. So I've created one interface iLoad and I will add this method string load text. I've created one more interface called iWrite. Here we'll add the method save text. So we can change our implementation slightly instead of having this file as a base class what we can do the base class can implement i load and i write. Now the read only file since it cannot save the text because it's just a read only file it doesn't need to implement the file instead it just needs to implement i load. Now again the read write file can implement i load and i write. So now as you can see all the interfaces are properly added to only those classes which need it. So we can change our SQL manager file so that it starts following the LISCUP substitution principle. Okay. So for uh, getting the text from the files, I will tell read only from I load files and I will have one more property called I write, which will be used for accessing all the write files. Now since we have two different interfaces, what I can do for the save text into files, I will rely on the write files. Since the write files will only be implemented by the required files, we don't need to have some kind of a special condition to check whether it's a read only file or not. Any file that has implemented the I write interface will have the save text method. So this is how we have handled the list of substitution principle. As you can see, without having any extra code or any special condition, the child classes were able to substitute the parent classes. So this makes our code more maintainable and more readable. After list of substitution principle comes the interface segregation principle. So what it tells is many client specific interfaces are better than one general purpose interface. So let's look at the code and we'll try to understand what it tries to tell. So here I have a interface called iLead iLead has three methods called create task, assign task and work on task. Now there are three users, a developer, a manager and a lead. The lead implements the iLead interface. So the lead is able to assign the task and is able to create the task and is able to also work on the task. If we come to the manager class, we can see the manager is able to assign the task and create the task. But obviously the manager will not come and work on the task. So here we had to throw new exception that manager cannot work on a task. So just as a recap, you know what principle this is violating in the first place. So this is violating the list of substitution principle. Now coming to the next class called developer class. So the developer class is only able to work on the task. It's neither able to create a task nor assign a task. So here also list of substitution principle is violated along with the interface segregation principle needs to be implemented. So what has happened here is because we have created a bulk interface, we have come into a situation where we need to implement those interface and throw not implemented exception. So how can we avoid it? So instead of creating a big interface, we can have chunks of small interfaces like public interface I create. So this will only be having called create task. Similarly, we'll have two other interfaces called I assign I work. So now instead of this big interface, we have three interfaces I assign and I work. So I assign will assign the task. I work will work on the task. Since the developer only needs to work on a task, the developer class needs to implement I work interface. And these two methods are no longer required. So we can easily remove them. 
similarly since the lead needs to assign create and work on the task so the lead can have all the three interfaces like i work i assign i create the lead can have the three interfaces now the manager will have i assign and i create this is the assign task i create will have this create task and since we don't have the bulk interface anymore we can just delete it as you can see interface segregation principle helped us in achieving the list cup substitution principle also so it's always a good idea to break your interface into smaller chunks of groups so after interface segregation principle comes the dependency inversion principle it tells that one should depend on abstractions not concretions so let's see it by example as you can see i have a class called product service and i have a method called log to file so this log to file what it does is it accepts a message and using the file logger it logs the message if we see the implementation of the file logger it's having something called log to file and log methods how does it violate the dependency inversion principle so in this case what happens is we are directly injecting the low level classes in the product service class so basically the high level classes should not be aware of the low level class implementation so let's look at a new scenario what if the client comes and asks that i need a new logger that should log into the database okay so now our log to database method uses the database logger to log the message now let's align our classes so that it follows the dependency inversion principle so for that first of all i will add a new interface that is i log interface now i log interface will have a single method called log and these needs to be implemented by our database logger and the file logger so here i have implemented the i log in the file logger in the database logger also i will inherit from the i log interface and since our log method is already there so all the methods of the interface are already implemented now going back to our product service so as you can see the high level class product service is too much aware of the low level implementation so in order to avoid that what i will do is i will have a a read only i log variable here and i will name it underscore log now i will comment these two things and i will just have one single method called log now i can use this underscore log variable to log the message it helps us not to know what underlying logger it needs to use so whatever instance the base class or the calling method will be giving to us will be using that to log our message it can be a file logger it can be a database logger we don't need to know about the we don't need to know about the underlying implementations so let's create a constructor that will accept this i log now underscore log is equal to log okay so assuming we are calling this uh, product service from the main class we'll quickly go to the program dot main so here we will see how can we invert the dependency from the product service so we have already introduced a i log so we'll tell that the i log instance object of log is nothing but uh, here we'll decide whether it will be a database logger or a file logger so let's make it a database logger okay now to the product service constructor we will send the object log now if we call product service dot log now we have now we can call product service dot log hello without calling either log to database or log to file so thereby we have inverted the dependency so what we have done we have use dependency injection to invert the dependency of the classes so this makes our code more maintainable for example in future the requirement comes instead of database logger we need to use the file logger so we can quickly change our i log interface to create the instance of a file logger so now our product service will start logging into the file so guys this was all about the video about solid principles here i tried to show when and where can we implement the solid principles If you like this video please hit the like button if you are new to our channel do subscribe to our channel for more such videos